So, what I'd like to do in this uh, first exercise we're going to uh, do uh, about integrating JSX graph with uh, stack is something like this. We have this uh, point, a movable point, P1, and then uh, these two circles, one fixed, this blue one, and then this green circle that is uh, adjustable by these two points that are defining it, a, its center and then this other point on its circumference. And we're also going to need to create some feedback so that the question tells us whether the point is inside a circle or not. Oh, this should probably say that it is not inside the blue circle, so let's fix this in our uh, question. So it should work like this. Okay. So let's start with a fresh new question. Just call it simple input binding or something like that. And then we'll get back uh, here in the uh, question variable soon. I want to randomize the center and the radius for the blue fixed circle. So we'll, go, uh, we'll do this in three parts. Let's first create the point P1, uh, bind that to the input and S1 which is this uh, default input in a stack question. And then uh, the second part is we are going to create that fixed circle with a, a randomized center and radius to see how th that works. And then in the third par part we will create um, the adjustable green circle. So let's first go here in the question text and I'm actually going to uh, show it in you, uh, this to you in this external editor uh, for a better view or better visibility. And let's just first uh, add these paragraphs or paragraph tags. And here we are going to tell the user that um, the task is to move the point which was called P1 inside a circle. So first we are only gonna create this point, no circles this time. So start with these JSX graph blocks. Then uh, inside this first opening block, remember this uh, slash here in the end block. So inside this first question block, uh, first we are gonna define the dimensions of the block, uh, of the graph. So let's say the width is 500 pixels and also the height for this one is 500 pixels. So it's 500 times 500 pixels and uh, then we're also going to need to create the reference to this input ans1. So we need to do it in here with this input ref ans1 command and then uh, we are going to name it. So this will be the ID of this input element created by these input uh, blocks here. So we'll call it ans1ref and then first of all we're going to need to create the board here in the JavaScript. So let's call that board. So it's variable. This stands for variable and it's the variable board which is equal to j x g j s x graph init board function. So we're gonna call this uh, function to create the board. And the first argument here is the or the first parameter that goes inside this one is the ID of the uh, div element hosting the board. So in this case, it's always uh, the div ID or the board ID when we are uh, dealing with stack. And then in the second, I'm gonna zoom a bit in. So in the attributes here, remember to use these curly braces. Uh, I just want to change the width of the of the size size of the bounding box for our board. So these are the um, limits of the x and y axis, and these go. Uh, in uh, this move in the counterclockwise orientation. So it starts with the 
left limit, then the top limit, then the right limit, and then the the bottom limit. So this one is the left or the left side x-axis in the negative direction. It's uh, oh, it's so it's the default is that it's, it runs from minus five to five to uh, five to minus five. So I want this to be from minus ten to ten. Uh, this is in the top direction, and then the next one is in the right direction, the positive x direction, and this is in the negative y direction, so I want this to go to minus 10. Okay. Next, let's create the point P1 with this board create a function and here in the first parameter we need to define the type so this is a point and the next thing that goes in here are the initial coordinates of this point so let's just say that it starts from the origin and then uh, here in the attributes Let's name the default name for a point is they go up alphabetically so this 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 be A. But I want to change that so I'll tell that the name of this point is going to be P1 and we can actually use later here. So put in these parentheses with these double slashes because this is uh, of type string you're gonna need these double slashes here instead of just one and um, then the next thing you need to do is to turn uh, ap uh, apply the math tags to this so that the tech this later will be rendered so we need to change that in the label options actually so uh, uh, type in the label and then for the label we set uh, use math tags option to be true so that will render this uh, <coughs> name for this point with math tax filter. And the last thing for now is to bind this point to this input. And for that we had the stack um, underscore jxg dot bind underscore point, this bind point function. Sorry. And here the first argument is the reference to this input which we named here to be the ans1 ref. So write that in ans1 ref. And then the second um, parameter here is this point p1. So plug that in. Uh, remember to end the lines in uh, with a semicolon or uh, colon always in JavaScript. So let's copy this here in the question text. Remember to change this from Moodle Auto format to HTM, uh, HTML format. Uh, that might uh, sometimes break things up. Uh, yeah. mm. Especially when you're exporting your questions. Then in the input options, this input type is fine. Here a model answer. So. These are the coordinates of the point and a model answer here could be the center of the circle. So if the point is in the coordinates of the center of the first circle, so, so then it's probably inside that circle. But we actually haven't uh, defined that center first, uh, ce center bef be before this. So let's just call it C1 center for now and we'll define it later. Then. Uh, we want to allow these values to be uh, of type float uh, of type float so change this from this 4 bit float option to be no and uh, the two other things i want to change is student must verify no and show the validation no for this exercise at least um, here in the prt1 well these are going to need to be something so let's just plug in something. I'm gonna name this later. This one will be dist sq and this will be um, radius sq. Actually, the other way around. I'll explain this later. 
just remove these as they don't suit this question really. So those were the standard feedback options or the def uh, standard feedbacks. And save changes and continue editing, then go and click preview. And there you go. We have the point here and we see that as we're mo uh, we are moving it, the coordinates of this point are being tracked here in the input ANS1. So let's go back to the question text here. Let's actually clarify here that um, this is the input ANS1. So I'm just gonna uh, write it in here because we are going to need another input soon when we are dealing with the adjustable uh, circle C2. But for now, actually, let's go all the way uh, up here to the question variables. I want to define the center for the first circle. So I actually already called it C1 center in the uh, input options. But let's define that variable here in the question of uh, variables. So this is going to be a pair of coordinates, a, a coordinate pair. So the first parameter here in this list of two elements is the x coordinate of the center. And I want to randomize that with this rand with step function. So let's say that it goes from minus 5 to 5 with a step size of 1 half. And then also randomize the y coordinate with this rand with prohib function. And let's say that it runs from minus 5 to 5, um, but excludes the point 0, so that the uh, circle cannot be centered in the origin at least where we created this point P1. Notice that it's created in the origin, so we don't want to this circle to be centered there. And let's say that the radius of this center uh, of this first circle, the blue circle, is 2 plus rand 3. So it will be something between 2 and 4 in this scenario. And then we'll go uh, inside here the question text again and just um, after this point P1 or after this, uh, after we bound this input, go here and create the variable called C1. And what is C1? It's going to be the circle. And to create the circle, we're uh, again going to call this crea uh, board create function. And this time the type of this element is going to be circle. And then here, the uh, second argument of this function should now be uh, a list where the first element could be the center of the circle. So we need to give this in the raw, um, raw text form. So we'll write it in like this with these delimiters so that it's going to be the value stored in this variable defined here in the question variables. And also the second um, parameter in this list should be the radius of the circle. I need to put this on the next line. So the next element in this uh, list is the C1 radius defined here in the question variables. And that's actually everything I'm going to with this circle. Well, if you want to, you can already change colors here. You could change the color of this uh, point P1 uh, to, let's say, uh, color this orange. That uh, the stroke color is the outline color of an element. And let's say that <coughs> the fill color. Oh, the, uh, yeah, the fill color, the interior color of an element is the fill color. Let's say that this is also orange. So the P1 I I in this e uh, example is going to be orange, but you can try other colors. They can be uh, RBG or hex format also. And 
this circle, let's say that it's actually going to be red this time for no apparent reason. I just want to do it like this this time for, for a change. Let's try to remember that. So in default this would be colored blue. And now I'm gonna copy this. Yeah, now we have our circle centered at C1 center, which is uh, randomized here in the question variables, and with radius C1, which is also randomized here in the question variables. And then we go down here. We need to add a question note here. Well, I could just copy this um, these stats for the for this uh, circle C1, as these are the things that set every uh, iteration of this quest, uh, question apart as of now. We already did um, set up this input uh, answer 1, but we need to do something here in the um, PRT1, where we're going to test whether the point is inside that uh, circle or not. So we in uh, here in the feedback variables we are actually going to define this radius sq and this dist sq variable. And the radius uh, sq is for radius squared. This should be the uh, radius of the blue circle, this c1 squared. So we can compare that with the distance squared, which is going to be the distance between the point p1 and the distance between this circle c1. So if this distance is less than the radius of the circle, then we know that the point is inside that circle. So let's say that the radius squared, or we know that the radius of the circle is c1 radius, defined in the question variables, and this has to be squared, so we square, square that, and then in the distance square we have to calculate the distance between this c1 center and the coordinates of this point, and the po coordinates of this point we know are stored in this input ans1, so let's calculate first the difference, the difference between those points or those coordinates is um, c1 center minus ans1. And now you could write this out with the Pythagorean theorem or in a shorthand notation that's actually the squared distance is the, is the dot product of this difference with itself. So we could do this. And now the comparison test or the answer test we are going to need uh, here is this comparison test num gt, which stands for number greater than, uh, greater than or other, we could also use the num greater than even test, so this gte. Let's try that. This allows the circles uh, the, or the point center to be uh, positioned on the uh, circumference of the circle also, so, so it could actually be a little off, but that's fine. So I'm gonna write this in a nice red color, because the uh, circle should be colored red. So if this answer test is true, then we give the user the feedback the point is inside the red, and let's bold that red circle. And if this is false, then we say in maybe a dull... Oh, this has to be corrected here. So this is the um, attribute color should be red. And here the color is gray. The color of this paragraph or text in this paragraph to be precise. And now we say that the point is not inside the, let's call this, red circle. Okay, so now the, this answer test is ready. Let's click Save Changes and continue editing. Go all the way down here, click Preview. Is everything the way we wanted it to be? Kind of uh, strange colors, so 
point P1 is now orange as I wanted it to be. It's movable. Well, let's try if it's inside here. The point is inside the red circle. Nice. If it's outside here, it is not. What happens if I move it here on the just on the circumference? It is not inside. If I move it here, it is. Yeah. So that's a bit up to the answer test we choose here. Uh, next, oh, notice one thing also. I actually forgot to fix this circle, so it's now movable. But because if it's not um, bind to any input, if I move it over here, uh, seemingly the point is not inside the circle. But if I click check, this point, uh, this circle is moved back to its original uh, initial position, and so the point actually is now inside the circle. So we need to. Uh, fix that and um, before we move on with the the second circle. So let's go here inside the question text which I have here on the right and now um, to fix that uh, issue with the first circle just here uh, in the attributes for the circle uh, after the stroke color I'm gonna also say that this is fixed so that will keep the circle at place. What we are going to need next for the other circle, the adjustable circle, we'll need a new input. So we'll copy this as one and just uh, to save time I'm just gonna uh, change the name of this uh, input from ANS1 to ANS2 in every single place. So this one actually here just tells us that which input we are dealing with when we look in the <coughs> in the question. And that's why I wanted to include it in the first place. Because I knew that we are going to need two inputs. And for this input two I'm going to need um, another reference. So go inside this uh, first JSX graph block and write input ref and this time this is the answer to input so write here ans2 and let's just call this ans2 ref then we'll go inside the JavaScript here and so for the adjustable circle uh, C2 I'm gonna call it we're gonna need the center point and the point in its circumference so let's first create that um, center. So let's call it C2 center. And just like creating a point, we'll create point. And uh, where could we place this? Perhaps uh, at the coordinates 5 and 5, that's fine. So it's in the first quadrant of the board. Uh, and then in the attributes, well, I want this, this to be, uh, let's say green, so stroke color is, or something, something else, let's say it's, it's colored teal, so stroke color teal, and then the fill color, I want this to be none, and I also want to hide the I want to hide the mm, name for uh, nameplate or the na name of this, so it won't be any letter. And I want to say I don't want to set anything, so I can use the either I could say that the name is blank like this, or another way of doing this is saying that the with label attribute for this element is false. And for the second point, we're gonna do it pretty much similarly. Call it C2 point. So this is the point on the cir uh, circle C2 uh, circumference. And call port create function. Type is point. And just a little bit of this point. So this, let's say it's at 7, x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 5. So this would create a circle centered at uh, x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 5 with a radius of 2 and the attributes for this element 
are actually going to be just the same as for the first one. I sure hope that teal is a valid name for a color, because <coughs> I'm not sure actually. And then we're just going to create the circle C2. I'm going to zoom out a bit so you can see everything here. So what C2, this is going to be the second circle. So again with the board create function and uh, set in the type its circle and as it the second element this is the, a list but this time we have the center just like um, so we have the c2 center that goes in here just like with the first circle we had the c1 center as the first element inside here and then the second element this time it's not the radius but it's, it's this point and this is also a valid way of creating a circle in uh, with JSX graph and just here in the attributes for this circle let's say that the a color of the outline of this circle is also going to be teal as with these points and then this one is also fixed so this just means that the circle is not um, movable it, uh, by dragging its um, its outline from the circumference but it's movable or adjustable by moving these points as these are not uh, fixed and the last thing we want to do here is to bind these points of course so we are going to call this uh, stack underscore jxg bind a point and now what would be a good choice here perhaps the direction because it's uh, we are going to need to know the distance between these two points to calculate uh, the radius of this uh, radius of this uh, circle c2 but well i i, I can actually give you all the uh, options so if we use this dual the simplest one where we just get the coordinates for the both uh, both points we bind we first type in the the name chosen for this uh, reference so it was ans to ref chosen in here so it's for the input to ans to and the second parameter here is going to be this C2 center point and the third parameter should be this C2 point and if we use this function then um, the the distance squared oh no the radius squared would be uh, calculated just like we did with the distance between the answer one and the this center uh, c1 center so it should be uh, could, we could calculate it by taking the difference between the oh so it's the uh, these coordinates which are in ans2 and it's it, it's going to be its first element uh, minus the coordinates of this point c2 uh, C2 point is pointing the circumference here, which is stored now in the ANS2 as its second element. And take, uh, then we need to take the dot, this dot product with itself. So this this would be the the radius SQ in this scenario. If we chose to use this one, if we instead chose to use the bind point relative function then it it, it work rather similarly but the radius squared would be just this second element because the first element now if we use this function uh, is going to be the coordinates of this point c2 and the second element is going to be the coordinates of this point relative to the uh, first point so it would just be the um, 
coordinates of the uh, second point squared with itself. This would be the radius in this ca case. And in the case you chose to use the bind point direction function, the radius squared would be the stored in the in the second element, second list in this input and two, and it would be the first element of that second list of that nest list. So which one are we going to use? Well, it's just pretty much a matter of taste, but I think I'm gonna go with this bind point relative. And remember that this is the radius squared, which we are going to need in the PRT. And with that being said, we are actually done with this, this uh, input here or this question text here, just copy and paste it here and then go all the way down here. Oh, let's actually create a new feedback, a new PRT for this uh, second circle. So create this feedback uh, question block and just call it PRT2. Go down here and save changes and continue editing. Now we have to um, fill in this info for the second circle. Well, what could be a model answer? So this will be a point where the second circle is moved, or the those. Um, it's actually rather hard to calculate this one with with this relative function now. Or not actually, because we could do it like this. So the this is a list of two lists, as per the as per the how these point uh, bind point uh, dual functions work. So here in the first uh, list, this could actually be the center of the first circle. So now. If I click the fill in the correct answer button, which, which would fill in this model answer, I'd get the the the, uh, the both of the circles would have the same center point. And then here in the second element, I could just plug in a list where the first element is the x coordinate, so relative to this center. Note that I didn't test this before. So this C1 radius and then the Y coordinate relative to that is just going to be zero. So this would actually, or this should be a, sen a circle centered at uh, C1 center with the same radius. So they would be now overlapping. And then uh, nothing else. 4-bit float, that has to be no. And again, these validation boxes just hide them. Student must verify no and show the validation. That's also going to be no. You can let uh, le uh, leave those unchanged, but then you have to usually click twice uh, to check your answer. And that's not really uh, useful with this interactive JSX graph uh, images or questions like this. So here in the feedback variables in the, uh, for the po potential response tree PRT2 we just created, we are again going to create those distance squared which actually um, uh, which is actually going to be the distance between the this point P1 and this point C2 center. Now remember that these uh, coordinates of this point P1 are stored in this input ANST1 and the coordinates of this C2 center point are stored in this input ANST2 as its first element. So the first element of ANST2 is called like this 
and then we take the difference of that point with the ans1 or the coordinates of the point p1 and to calculate the uh, square distance we take the dot product of this difference with itself like this and then here in the uh, next line we define the variable radius squared but I actually wrote it in here so I'm just going to copy and paste it like this so that's the radius of this second circle C2 and then we just choose the number G, a num GT or the num GTE test whichever you like and as the students answer we write in the dist squared and as the teachers answer the radius squared so if this is larger than this then the point is inside the circle and this feedback will be true or this answer test will return true and we say that um, we give the feedback with this green color or what was it? oh it was teal <laughs> so with this teal color we say that the point is inside the teal circle and if this test uh, returns false then with a dull gray color we say that the point is not inside the circle Boo save changes and continue editing go all the way down here and click preview so there's our nice teal circle, there's our orange point, and there's the fixed red circle. Now, if I just click uh, check now, nothing should happen. No uh, PRT activates as there's no input yet. We usually uh, expect, the, uh, expect the user to interact with the graph before there's actually nothing to check. So that's the reason for that. Uh, you could, if you really need to force an input uh, uh, beforehand, so that you could check before any interaction has been made, but that's usually not uh, desirable. So, this seems to still work as it did before. It's tracking the coordinates of this point P1. And if we now check, we see that uh, it's actually returning us the uh, feedback from the PRT1 but it's not uh, this PRT2 has not been activated yet and it's or not going to activate before we interact with this second circle so now if I move it over here we get that the point is not inside the circle now I have to check why that is the case Did I make a typo somewhere? Let's go here in the potential response tree. Oh, hmm. notice here, this student answer has to be greater than this teacher answer. So if the radius is greater than the distance squared, then the point is inside the circle. And another thing I noticed here, the point is not inside the teal circle. Plug that in here. Always, always have to be careful. Now, let's see if the preview works. So, if I move it over here, nothing happens. The second PRT isn't activated yet. But if I move this point here and here, the point is inside the teal circle, so now it works. Amazing. If I move it outside, now the po both PRTs have been uh, triggered and I get the feedback from both of them. And if I just move this point inside here, it should be inside both of the circles. Nice. Great work if you got this far. Um, by the way. And if I just uh, click here, fill in the correct responses, now 
they're both overlapping and this should be correct as or now we get the feedback that the point is actually inside both of the circles. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you in this um, in this exercise. The last thing you might want to do is you might at this point want to hide these input fields from the user. Although if you want the user to be able to plug in the coordinates by hand, you might leave this in. So of course this work like this also. But if you want the user to just be able to interact with the graph, you might want to hide these. And what you can do to um, make that possible, you could go in the question text here. And in the question text, you can either somewhere in the code um, access the element. Uh, you would have, have to access all of the elements and hide them uh, one by one. You can do that by calling the document get element by id and this function takes its argument the as its argument the reference to this input or the id of the element which is now in case of the input one it's the ans one ref and here you set the style and style display to be equal to none this would hide the input one but it would not even hide this text actually. And you could do the same for this input too and just take away the text and hide them like that of course in the JavaScript or you could actually hide this whole nonsense from here by doing the following. You could write in, uh, you could wrap it inside this div element, uh, div tags like this and define the style of this div uh, element HTML element to be this display none. And if we now copy and paste this question text in here, save changes and continue editing, and then go to the preview, we see that both of the input boxes have indeed been hidden. So with this, I'll end this uh, exercise. Hope you enjoyed.